Welcome to part two of the compound word game app tutorial using Thunkable. We are ready to put some pictures here on screen two. And in my example, I have chosen um, hair, paint, and tooth for my three pictures. So what I need to do is find three pictures to store in our file here. And our this is where all the files or picture files that we'll use um, get stored in, in the app. So let's go ahead and try to find some. Now to find pictures, we need to make sure that we're not just stealing from Google. We need to make sure that we are using copyright friendly images. So when you open a new tab on your Chromebook or in Chrome um, or any browser, make sure you go to images.google.com. So I'm gonna just click images here. And instead of typing directly in here, I need to go to settings first. And I'm gonna do what's called an advanced search. I'm looking for pictures that are legal for me to use, copyright friendly. So first I'm gonna start by typing wig clip art. Um, and the reason I type wig in is because if I search for hair, I'm gonna get people's faces with hair on them. And I want just the hair because I don't wanna confuse the people who are using my app. So I'm actually gonna look for a wig. So I'm gonna search for wig clip art and I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and select the middle option here, which is free to use or share even commercially. All right, so I've gone to images, I've clicked on advanced search, and I fill out just the top line and the bottom line to find copyright friendly images. So these are pictures that people have said, it's okay, you can use these for a project and even sell them. All right, so let's go ahead, I like this one. When I find one that I like, I'm going to right click on it to save it. Now, I notice that I like this one because it has a clear background. It may look like a checkerboard background to you, but what that's actually indicating is that it's a clear background and it will layer nicely on top of other items. For example, if you wanted to change the background color of your app screen to like purple or something, it wouldn't have a white box around it like over here. It would actually show through the purple would be here in the center. So to save it, we right click, save image as. Do not click save link as. That's a common mistake that people make. We're going to click save image as and remember to name it something that you'll remember. So I'm going to type in hair and it's a PNG and it's saving on my desktop for if you're using a Chromebook it'll probably look a little different but that's okay. Save the image and now it shows up here for me. Um, since I've already had these settings changed in my advanced search I can go ahead and look for my next um, object, which was a paint bucket. So I'm going to click paint bucket and this is the one that I like. So I'm going to right click on it. Again, it has a clear background, which I think is always helpful. I'm going to type paint and save. And then I have one more to look for, which is my tooth. A smile on it. Okay. He also has a clear background. That's great. So save image as tooth. So now I have three images saved um, in my downloads folder or actually it's on my desktop, and I should be able to go into Thunkable now and drag them up into this spot that says files. So I'm gonna drag tooth, and if dragging doesn't work, you can also do choose a file and find it in your file tree like you normally would. Okay, so now I have my three pictures here. Now all I need to do is click on image, and under image source, select the each one of these pictures. So the first one will be hair, I'm gonna do resize contain. That will make sure that the picture that I just put in there will fit inside the size of this box. If you wanna change the size of the box, you can change these pixel amounts here, okay? Uh, and then my second picture, I'm going to do paint. And again, I'm going to say contain. And my third picture is going to be the tooth and contain. All right, so now I have all three of my pictures here and my text in or my input box is ready for the user to type something in. And then the submit box is ready to either move on to the next screen or give the user a hint if they're having trouble. So what I'm gonna do now is pause the video. We're gonna need to do some coding on that submit box uh, button. So let's go into blocks. I'm gonna pause the video and give you a chance to figure out what it might look like in there when we do the coding. Okay, so if you were thinking about this button again, so just like we had in the first screen, when that button was clicked, we navigated. This is the same thing. When that button's clicked, we want our app to do something, but we're not quite sure what it's going to do yet. Uh, we need to do an if statement. So the if statements are under the logic uh, category. So I'm gonna pull an if statement out here, 
So if they put in brush, then what do we want to happen? Well, we want to navigate to the next screen. If they put in something other than brush, we want a hint to pop up. All right, so if we need an else too. So let's click on this setting wheel and we'll drag an else over underneath the if because we have two conditions. Either they type in brush or they don't. If they type in brush, do one thing. If they don't, if it's something else, we'll do something else. All right, so what goes next to the if? Well, if the text input that they give us, so let's look for text input text. We'll get the text that they typed in. Okay, if that equals brush, like literally br, we'll type it in here with the blank text box, b-r-u-s-h, if that equals brush, then navigate to screen three. Well, how can we set these two equal to each other? That's what we need to say. Let's look in the math block section, and we're going to get the, e oh, actually, it's not math, it's logic. I'm sorry about that. Here we go, logic. If the text that they typed in equals this text box of brush, then we want to navigate to screen two. Oh, and that's under control. And by screen two, I mean screen three. Now we haven't made screen three yet, so I'm actually going to have to go back and change this later because we haven't made our next screen. But for now, we'll leave that there. So if the text box that they typed in equals brush, then we'll go to screen uh, three. Now, think about this right here. When you're using an iPad, it defaults to a capital letter. So they're either going to have to change uh, to take off the caps lock for that first letter, or you could make this a capital D to make it easier for them. Now, I don't think you should do that because I think that when you're typing out a compound word or when you're thinking about a compound word, you should keep the second half of that word lowercase, right? Because we don't capitalize the middle of a word. So I think you should leave it like this. It's just that your user is going to have to always press on that shift button to remember that the second half of a compound word is not capitalized. Okay, so if it's not, though, if, it, if they do not type in the correct answer, then we want to set um, a label. Let's go back and look. This label right here maybe would be a good one to put a hint in. So that label for me is, let's expand this and see which one it is. So if I click on that, that's my label five. Let's put a hint in label five. For me, it's label five. For you, maybe it's a different number. So label five, I want to set the text to say something. So again, I'm going to grab an empty text box. And I might say something with like, um, the answer begins with a lowercase b. That might be the hint I give for the very first question, just to remind them that they need to make that a lowercase. It also gives them a little hint that it's going to start with the letter b, and that might help them. All right, so now what you can do is test your app out. So you can take your um, iPad and log into the Thunkable app using the same Google account that you're logged into on your computer, and then click Live Test. So it'll ask you to log into the app, and then you'll be able to navigate between screens here and also um, on your device, and you can test it out and see how it goes. In the, um, let's see, in the next video, we will uh, talk a little bit more about how to finish out the app with additional screens and a final screen and also um, an icon for your app.